outline, Matchbox was a collective of five producers that came together to form a company four years ago. So we're three of us in Sydney and two in Melbourne. Uh, quite easy, the women in Sydney and the men in Melbourne. And uh, it's been a really great coming together. Somehow that group was much greater than the sum of the parts and it's been, been a very big success and we've been able to uh, work together very successfully. Mostly we've been making television um, and so pro a lot of what I'm going to talk about tonight and a lot of what Belinda's going to talk about is about television, but most of what we're going to say is equally you know, valid for feature films and for documentaries and for online. We're just talking really a lot of the principles about how to think about what sort of concepts might work in the marketplace. The reason that we concentrate on television at Matchbox, even though we mostly haven't got a background in television, is that it is a business model that can work. Um, as a feature film producer of quite a few years, you spend your life as a feature film producer developing projects on your own time and your own money. You can go to Screen Australia and get some money, you can go to Screen New South Wales and get some money, but it's never enough for the work that it takes. And you can take two to five years, sometimes longer, to get a feature film script ready for the marketplace, then you take it to the marketplace, <coughs> And sometimes you find that it's not what the marketplace is wanting anymore. It's what they wanted a year ago or 18 months ago, but it's not what they want now. And that's a very painful thing. Whereas with television, uh, it's, it's for an outlet. They know what they want, mostly, and they either want your project or they don't want your project. So what we've been able to, to do is generate a lot of projects, uh, get them to a kind of, often just two pages, and then put them in front of the networks. And they will mostly say fairly quickly, yes, we want that, when can you start development, here's some money, get some writers in a room, get going, or no, we wouldn't be interested in that. And they're often very, very clear about why they don't want something. And sometimes you sit across the table and think, oh, it's so obvious <laughs> why they wouldn't want that. <laughs> so uh, as a feature film producer, and I'm certainly not out of feature films, it, it's been a very, uh, I found it very rewarding, you know, we, uh, I read the slap, I got very, very excited about the possibilities of it for television, um, talked to Tony Ayres, he said, yes, let's do it, we had to compete, a lot of other people wanted to get the rights to the slap, but as soon as we had the rights, we had networks queuing up to say, we want to do this with you, you know, let's get started on the development of the audiences. So this is a, a show and particularly aimed at boys because boys were kind of underserved in the kids' TV market. That's right, and it came about because um, one of the commissioning editors for ABC3 came over for a meeting and he was complaining they just had a, um, they had a just called for submissions for shows for boys and he said, ah, oh, you know, they're all so earnest. Where's the breaking bad for boys? And it, you know, it was, he only had to say that to Tony once. By the next day, we had this. He had the lost boys. Um, so underground, once again, a Tony Ears idea. Um, the rest of us try to have a few ideas a month, but and I guess it, as a general thing, you know, it, don't get too stuck on just one or two ideas. Really try to open yourself up to uh, having new ideas. I've been amazed since we started Matchbox. I just didn't have the confidence, really. I felt that everybody else had the ideas. I'm the producer, people come to me, they say, hey, let's do this, and then I choose, or you know, my gut tells me what I'd like to do, and off I go. Um, but the discipline of working in a company that's relying on all of us to generate ideas, um, I've certainly got a lot better at it. I'm nowhere near Tony, but you know, I'm coming up with good ideas, and I'm you know, very proud to say that making the slap was my idea, and you know, as soon as I read that book, I could recognise that it could be something really amazing for TV. Anyway, so Tony S said, let's do something about Julian Assange. And because he does have 15 ideas a day, I heard that idea and said, yep, I, I'll do that, I'll do that, <laughs> and sort of rushed forward with it. And uh, so what we did was we contacted um, a journalist called Mark Davis, who works for uh, SBS as a foreign correspondent, and who'd done a couple of big stories on Julian. So he came in and had a chat to us, and originally we were thinking about making a film, and then in a very short space of time, Miramax, Weinsteins, 
you know, five different companies announced that they were going to make feature films about Julian Assange. It was not all that long after the social network. So I think people, you know, I went to see the social network and it was thanks to seeing the social network that I realised, oh, there really is a story in this Julian Assange thing. And I think a lot of people felt the same way. Um, so we thought, well, we can't compete. We just can't compete with that. So the only way to compete is to be the first, and the only way to be first is to make TV. So we decided to pitch it as, as a TV show, and we had been very keen to sort of branch out from just making things for the ABC, so we decided to pitch it to 10. Because they do make things like uh, The Good Wife, they do show things like The Good Wife, The Homeland, that kind of thing. They have a sort of political kind of thing going on. They're aiming at an a audience that's, you know, 25 to 50 uh, is, is, you know, really where they're, where they're at. Mark drew our attention to a book called Underground that was the only book about Julian that hadn't been bought by the Weinsteins or uh, Miramax. And, you know, we're always looking for books. And if you're, in, you know, wanting to get into this area or working in this area, you should be looking at books and magazine stories and articles and all of that. Sort so of thing. Underground... Julian Assange and the International Subversives, which was the name of his nerdy little gang of three, who were these mathsy boys who were into computers when almost nobody uh, had personal computers of any kind. The days of the Commodore 64. When you see when you see the show, you're going to see a lot of clunky old computers. 64 was 64 kilobytes, so it would contain probably a page of text or something. Really not much more than an electric typewriter at that point, but these guys were really into it. Um, the WikiLeaks Foundation story. So that's, if you like, our, our log line that we went with into that meeting. We pitched it to Rick. Um, he looked at the, the cover page, he didn't read the back, he listened to us, and he said, yep, that would be great. And we said, you'd like to develop it? And he said, no, 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 we'd like to make it. And so <laughs> we ended up out on the footpath outside Network 10 going, oh my God, now we've got to get the script. <laughs> yeah.